For 14 years, I've made 1080p ProRes Proxy or Avid DNX 36 a no questions asked default to making video editing smoother. However, as of this week, permanently, I'm switching to using 1080p H.265 proxies made with the Blackmagic Proxy Generator app so I can easily cut 4K, 6K, 8K footage without a problem. The Proxy Generator app is awesome because it can run in the background and it's super simple to use. You just add a source camera folder with footage that's been copied off to your hard drive. You choose H.265 from the format section and hit start. But why have I decided to make this crazy switch away from the industry standard ProRes to a very complex long op codec? And what the heck is a proxy? Let me explain and maybe you'll try H.265 proxies too. So what the heck is a proxy and why should we be making them? Well, it's a smaller file in both size and resolution and proxies are usually made with a codec that's easier for the computer to decode. Typically the compression is intra frame, that's TRA. And it's also called, you may have heard of iframes. It's just a fancy way of saying, hey, you don't need data from the frames around the frame that you want to look at. The frame stands alone. Now with H.265, what I'm suggesting I'm going to use, the compression is actually temporal, which means inter-frame, T-E-R, which means it does need data around the from frames around the frame you want to see up in the viewer. But more on this coming up in reason three down below of why I've chosen to switch. Believe it or not, Everything you watch on Netflix is edited using a proxy file. But the reason the Netflix shows look so good when you watch them at home and they're finally rendered out to 4K is that the stand-in proxy files are replaced for the high-resolution color-graded camera originals, you know, in the final stages of post-production. Matching timecode and file names makes swapping to the originals just a simple button press in DaVinci Resolve. Because the data rate is only 5 megabits per second, I can make H.265 proxy files 38 times smaller than many camera original files. So regardless of the camera that's used, I can work with video files that take up only 2 to 3 gigabytes per hour of footage. Now, in contrast, ProRes Proxy and Avid DNX 36 take up about 16 gigabytes per hour. So 2 to 3 versus 16. And oh, pro tip, by the way, DNX 36, the 36 stands for 36 megabits per second, if you're wondering. And if you don't see that, on the, the, new, the newer format's called DNX LB, and it's essentially the same when it's 1080p. Now, these H.265 file sizes are ideal when you consider the high price of cloud storage and the necessity that we all have now when you upload and download files when you're collaborating remotely using DaVinci Resolve. So you could easily put 200 hours of H.265 proxy in the basic 500 gigabyte Blackmagic cloud storage plan. That's a lot of footage, 200 hours. Even though the Blackmagic proxy generator says ProRes on a Mac, if you choose this option, it actually creates ProRes proxy files. This is the smallest flavor of ProRes. And in the last few years, as I've started to do more commercial compositing that has to start with the low res proxy footage, it's easy to see when you zoom in in Fusion how blocky a ProRes proxy file actually is. See how it makes these little blocks that you maybe don't see when it's not zoomed in so much? Now, in this green screen example, you can see the original key I started to pull with the Delta keyer without making any extra adjustments. The H.265 on the one side and the ProRes proxy on the other, for sure the H.265 file is giving much cleaner temporary results for the client to sign off so we can get into finishing later on. Now, while we're in Fusion, Here's an example of the H.264 proxy file compared against the original Blackmagic RAW file. And now here you can see the ProRes proxy compared against the RAW file and the H.265 compared against the RAW file. You can see here, if I even compare the H.265 against the H.264, that the H.265 is so much cleaner even in terms of the compression artifacts. This reason comes with the caveat that I'm personally using an M2 Max Studio computer. However, all Apple Silicon comes with a special media engine is what they call it, and that actually helps decoding and encoding H.265 footage, which is traditionally really hard on a CPU. This never existed on Macs until the M1 machines came out, and DaVinci Resolve takes full use of the hardware. 
Now, if you're on Windows, I'm sorry, I, I don't have a Windows machine. You're just gonna have to test the codec for yourself. But to my huge surprise, and the reason that I stayed away from H.265 for editing purposes until just now, is I actually never bothered to test performance for myself against ProRes Proxy. So this week I had time and I dropped my recent canoe trip with about 100 minutes of footage and compared the editing and playhead feel, not just encoding and export times and stuff like that that doesn't matter for me, between a timeline full of ProRes Proxy and H.265 Proxy, and I couldn't tell the difference. I also stacked up clips like I was doing a multicam, you know, the picture and picture and picture sort of thing, using the video collage effect, and there was no difference there either. I could trim just as easily if it was ProRes Proxy. The H.265 passed my performance Pepsi challenge. So it's both smaller, uh, better quality, and it performs the same to me as ProRes Proxy. How do you actually use it? Well, there's at least five methods that I know of for making proxies with the Blackmagic and Resolve tools, but I'm just gonna show you my favorite. When you install DaVinci Resolve, a sidecar app that's called Blackmagic Proxy Generator is also installed into your applications folder. After you've copied footage from a camera card to your hard drive, add the footage folder, choose the H.265 format, and start. After it's done, stop the service, and you should see a new folder that's called proxy that's in the same location as the rest of the files. This is important for Resolve to see and work with the files natively. Now, the new proxy footage, it's full of QuickTimes and those have matching timecode and file names. That's the important thing. Even though the app says 1080p, it's actually gonna maintain the source aspect ratio. So if you shoot with DCI 4K, like this canoe footage trip was, it's not actually 16 by nine like 1080p is, it adjusts accordingly. So it's native aspect ratio. And that's exactly what you want for all the resolution independence that's across Resolve. And it makes swapping files seamless, regardless of how you do any sort of sizing adjustments in the inspector. One more bonus tip about using the Blackmagic proxy generator is that if you have a NAS or Blackmagic cloud store or cloud pod, something that's network attached, multiple computers can see the same footage at the same time, the multiple computers can actually process that folder footage as well at the same time. What it does is it'll pass off one file to one machine and then the next machine's gonna get the next file and it's just a way to batch transcode faster. Oh, and if you make use of the any sort of phone footage, you know, with the maybe you've got the new iPhone 16 Pro Max, which I can't wait to try out. Most of the phone footage is always shot with a variable frame rate, believe it or not. It's not a constant frame rate, even if you push that 2398 button on there. And this proxy generator app actually outputs a constant frame rate file, which is perfect for post-production, especially when you need to work with other applications and other vendors. To use these files in DaVinci Resolve with the preferred proxy workflow, import the camera originals first and only import the camera originals, okay? That's the important thing. Only import the camera originals and Resolve will automatically see and use the proxy folder that's on the hard drive, which makes swapping them as simple as choosing this button that's right up here in the upper right of the timeline viewer. You don't actually import the proxy files separately into Resolve. When you render out from the deliver page, Resolve is smart. It's always gonna use the original quality footage as long as it's mounted and you did not check the use proxies only checkbox that's in the render settings. You don't actually need to manually change the playback view in the edit page to not prefer proxies when you render for the full original quality. It's gonna do that by default. Just make sure it's connected. And with the brand new Blackmagic cloud storage, not the local boxes, but their cloud storage, it's no problem if you wanna easily just send proxies from a project to a remote editor across the country and not even managing any extra folder hard drives like you might have to with Dropbox. Only the proxies are gonna get sent up to the cloud and when the remote editor opens Resolve project over in another city, only the proxies are gonna be downloaded and they won't be filling up as hard drive like crazy. You can tell if you have proxies only available if you see a purple bar on the top of the timeline. Purple in Resolve means proxies, purple proxy. Hey, one quick word of caution, if you're using a project in a collaborative cloud library, Resolve's default is to automatically create proxies in the project settings. So I would open up your project settings and uncheck the project setting option before loading any footage in because I like making proxies with the generator app because with this app, Resolve doesn't actually need to be open to a very specific project to make the proxies. Hey, I'm Chadwick. Welcome if you're new here. I do really appreciate you. And I wanna hear more about what you're creating and how you create it. So send me a message on creativevideotips.com 
and that way I'll actually get it in my inbox. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.